Good morning. Happy Monday morning, everybody out there. Thank you guys for uh, clicking on this video and, and listening. T today we're going to touch on uh, overcoming initial resistance and, and, the, and initial negativity to the insurance business. Uh, and again, this is Cody with Secure Agent Mentor and SecureAgentMentor.com. Our title again, one more time, is Overcoming Initial Resistance and Initial Negativity to the Insurance Business. Uh, and I've got my father, Brian, in here. He's the owner of Secure Insurance Group. And he's going to be joining us to talk about this topic. This is a career that he's been doing for a long time, almost 26 years. He's passionate about it. When I told him what I was talking about today, he said, I have to join, I have to be here. So he's here, and he's ready to be on the phone. Um, what, what, t t tell us about what question you were, that you found, and, and actually you've known this for a long time. Tell us what question you found uh, over the weekend and that, that you knew to be true that I had no idea. Well, when Cody mentioned this topic, the first thing to come to my mind is, is that uh, I, I personally don't believe the insurance industry has a negative connotation whatsoever, but uh, the first thing to come to my mind is, is the, the insurance industry uh, has more millionaires in the, in the insurance industry than any other industry uh, there is in the U.S. Yeah, think about that. What industry has more millionaires than any other industry in the U.S.? The answer is the insurance industry. You're in the right field. You're on the right track. You're listening to this video. Now, what's the stats behind that? Uh, th with the in the insurance industry, uh, there's 12% of all females. Uh, all females who are millionaires are in the insurance industry, and and there's 16% uh, of all males uh, that are millionaires are in the insurance industry. So it's a it's a pretty large. And the next closest on the males, uh, again, the males for the insurance industry, 16%. The next closest is 12%. The next closest industry, and uh, so it's a pretty pretty. Uh, Big gap between first and second place. Four percent of billions of people. That's not a. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we took the lead leaps and bounds. So what would you? Uh, why would you say people? You know, kind of. And a lot of a lot of new agents, maybe agents that are have been in the business, or you know, why why would agents and, and some people out in the world think that maybe there's some maybe there's some negativity towards our business, but we don't think so at all, right? I mean I don't believe there's any negativity towards our in industry. I know that some people do believe that. And the only reason they believe it is there's there's some individuals who simply are looking for a reason uh that they're not not succeeding. And uh so they've got to justify it within their own minds. And a lot of them take it home and, you know, justify it to their spouses and so forth. Uh, and uh, it gives them a justification for the reasons they're not succeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were yeah, you were actually telling me a story this morning. You said you weren't going to name any names. Uh, I, I, like Cody said, I've been in the insurance industry for 26 years. I started back in April of 1990, and uh, I've been on the, uh, the the leadership side uh, for multiple years, for the majority of those years, uh, for uh, for about 19 of those years. And uh, being on that side, I've, I've you know, recruited and developed a lot of individuals. What well, kind of one individual that kind of stands out in my mind that I've uh, rec that I helped develop over the years was an individual that, you know, every time the stock market went down a few points, you know, it was doom and gloom. Uh, okay. When the uh, just anything that occurred, you know, the new president, you know, that hurt every you know every four years we got a new president that hurt his business. Uh, every time that you know the uh, uh, the dollar wasn't as worth as much as it was the day before. That hurt his business. Uh, in 2008, you would have thought that you know that uh, the world was coming to an end when the when the stock market crashed. You know during that time period, uh, and he was. But the thing about this individual is is that it was kind of an. And I knew that he was he was just an individual was always looking for excuses as a reason he wasn't he wasn't excelling, and uh, he would he would take every every excuse he possibly could. And uh, use it to, to justify his, his his lack of success. Well, one day, you know, we're uh, having a, a function, and I invited the entire office. We're having dinner out, and uh, his his wife is actually sitting beside me at this dinner. And his wife begins to, uh, you know, ask me, you know, make comments like, "Boy, the insurance industry is really tough. Boy, the insurance industry is getting harder and harder every day. Boy, the insurance industry." And she starts naming all these things that he had already brought to my attention, you know, brought to everyone's attention because anybody would listen to him. He was always looking to complain, and uh, and so anyway, so uh, and then she she basically anything he had ever said she recapped it at that dinner conversation, 
Well, that let me know that he's going home and telling her, you know, the reason in justifying it to her, the reasons he wasn't, uh, ex, uh, ex, ex, you know, excelling in the insurance industry. And one of the uh, uh, when individuals, there's there's two types of individuals. One that's going to look for reasons that they're not succeeding, and they're going to, and but they're but they're going to look for excuses, and you know, to again to justify why they're not uh, succeeding. And then there's another type of person is is that okay? There's an obstacle, a roadblock, uh, and that person is going to find a way to succeed. And they're you know they're, they're simply it doesn't matter what obstacle, roadblock you put in front of them, they're going to find a way to succeed. So the first kind of person, the, the failure is never their fault, and the second type of person, the success is is always their fault. You know, it's just kind of weird how it, it's a mindset is all it is. It's just a specific type of mindset. Whether you are uh, dedicated to focusing on succeeding and letting nothing stop you whatsoever. You're doing whatever it takes or things get in your way and you make excuses along the way and you start to justify them and it affects your business. And that's true because a, a lot of individuals in, in uh, 2000, uh, well, I can't remember exact year it came out, but the do not, do not call laws came out. Uh, a lot of agents just thought that that was the end of the insurance industry. <laughs> the world and, has come to an end. <laughs> you know, they, they really did. They, they, they really, you know, thought that, this is over. While others, uh, you know, because they couldn't do cold calling anymore, and you know, they and while others just found other avenues and other ways to get in front of people, you know, doing networking events, joining referral clubs, asking for referrals, <laughs> yeah. uh, and things of that nature. Uh, and we could name you know multiple other th- other ways to do it. Uh, but a lot of people took that as it, it was just a doom and gloom. And uh, again, it was just another reason that that person wasn't wasn't. Uh, it, it, excelling in the insurance industry. Uh, one thing I always tell individuals is that the insurance industry is not for everyone. It's a very tough industry. When I say very tough industry, uh, is that it, the insurance industry is, you know, it's hard to get in front of people. But, you know, the creative individuals, they find ways to get in front of people. Mm-hmm. They don't make excuses. They simply get the job done. Uh, and, you know, it was it was so funny whenever I had this conversation with this this gentleman, I, again, I won't name his name, but, you know, with his wife that day. And so the next day at the office, uh, I called him in my office and I said, and I, you know, uh, I'll just use the name John. I said, John, I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, all the, I said, you're going home and justifying to your wife why you're not, you're not excelling in the interest industry, aren't you? He said, no. He said, we discussed things. He said, but I'm just, you know, just telling the truth. And I said, well, John, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, uh, uh, here, here you are making excuses why you're not excelling. And I said, and there's, but I said, and I went into the, you know, there's more millionaires in the interest industry. I said, so I wonder if anybody told them they're not supposed to be excelling. I said, I wonder if anyone told them that, you know, that they're not supposed to be, you know, uh, succeeding at a high level and, and, you know, that the, that the uh, do not call laws and all the other changes uh, it is supposed to be affecting them, and they shouldn't still continue to be, you know, succeeding at, at the high levels that they were. You know, they've got to make sure that these things, you know, affect their business. And uh, so, anyway, long story short, this this individual I'm referring to is no longer in the insurance industry. And that day, I just told him, I said, you know, and again, I use the word named John. I said, John, I said, this may be, you know, may not be the right career for you. I said because. You know, you're finding reasons that you're not uh, excelling, and I said, well, others are finding ways to excel, and uh, so it's just again, it comes back to the mindset. I heard Brian Tracy. I listened to an audio book recently. Brian Tracy. He had a he was he was at a, he was at a seminar. He had a lady come up to him in the seminar, and she said, you know, Brian. She she said, Mr. Tracy, I hate I hate my job. I hate everybody there. You know, I they're all so mean to me. You know, I just I just she just brought up all the reasons she hated her job. And so he, he sat down with her and went over the pros and cons of her job. And he started asking her, what do you like about your job? Well, before he knew it, there was a list of like 50 things that she liked about her job. So he had her go home, and every morning and every night, he had her stand in front of her mirror and say, I love my job because of this reason. I love my job because of this reason. I love my job because of this reason. And she came back to his seminar a year later, and he asked how everything was going, and she said, I love my job. They are the greatest people in the world. Everyone's so nice to me. And he he, he said he said what changed? He said, well, I guess they changed. I don't know. 
it wasn't that she, she didn't think she changed, but obviously it was her mindset. She started looking for the positives instead of looking for the negatives. One other thing, uh, this is a, uh, in 2008 when the, when the you know, economy did you know, take a pretty, pretty big hit, a lot of individuals used that as a, a, a justification of why they wouldn't, couldn't sell insurance. Well, I met with several individuals back in 2008 uh, that, that made the comment, you know, some of the really successful insurance agents that, that uh, I had surrounded myself with made the comment, well, the thing about it is there's never, they realize that there's never a greater need for insurance than now. And uh, with the economy being tanked, uh, you know, economy, you know, the, the uh, uh, stock market and so forth, it, 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 you know, went drastically down about 35% or so. A lot of those individuals uh, realized that, and they made the you know statements that there's never a greater time than to be in the insurance business than right now and today. And uh, while others, and you know, were saying that, you know, it uh, it was over. They were they had already uh, put themselves in, in in doom and gloom. So uh, it was just so uh, uh, such a contrast difference talking to you know certain individuals you know, one group of individuals versus another group of individuals uh, back in 2008 when, you know, when things did, uh, uh, you know, stock market and so forth, you know, took a big hit, so. And we all know that there were people that were looking for the positives back then. There was probably probably uh, two different agents in those all those real estate offices or all those security firms, you know, and one's probably packing up his bags, packing up his pictures, putting everything in a box, walking to his car, putting his car, going and selling his car, he, you know, his life is ended, he's, he's cashing his retirement fund, everything else. And there's probably another one that's saying, you know what, I love my job, I'm sold on it, and you know what, it's not going to affect me, it's actually, believe it or not, it's going to help me, because there's going to be there's gonna be less competition. And while the industry is quote-unquote down, I'm going to take my chance and my opportunity to actually dominate this market. Uh, and I'm sure there are people out there like that, and there's people like that in the insurance business, you know. And so, um, one one other thing on this right here, on this kind of this topic is, uh, again, I've I've had the opportunity to manage hundreds of agents throughout the, you know, my career, and uh, a lot of individuals. Uh, it was it, it it's not funny, but it it it's a reality. You know, I'd meet with agents once a week, and and I'd ask them kind of what's in their pipeline, what are they working on, and uh, I had you know this group of agents. Uh, they were telling me the same names week after week after week after <laughs> week after week. And uh, so finally I got to the point, I'm like, you know, we got to put some new names in your pipeline. You know, this, this same name that you keep, you know, the same group of names you keep giving me every week and you have for the last, you know, six or eight weeks, uh, have you asked that individual to buy? And, you know, the thing about it is is that if you know a person is dodging you, you know, you get to the reality that a person is dodging you on the phone call, then it's probably time to move on to the next, you know, find a, uh, find a candidate or a prospect that, uh, that is truly interested, someone that you are going to be able to sell. But agents, you know, the, the unsuccessful agents, they tend to, uh, are the people are looking for excuses for not failing or, or for failing, uh, they tend to keep those same names on their, on their uh, prospect list, even though they know that person is, intentionally dodging them, intentionally not taking their calls. And there's too many people out there to help in order to keep those people on your prospect list. You can keep those people on your prospect list, call them once every six months, but you know, don't focus on those. Focus on the individuals that, uh, that are, are looking for help because there are millions out there looking for help. Absolutely, and you bring up a phenomenal point about, about building a pipeline and having people in it and people that are actually interested in I heard something recently, uh, I know it's been a while ago, but and it's, uh, it's something that I'm trying to implement into my business. For every one client that you want, for every one client that you want, have 10 in your pipeline. For every one that you want, have 10. And some of those are going to trickle out, and you're going to end up getting more business than you would have if you would have just had uh, that one or those couple that are, I'm telling you, Brian, they're going to buy. You know, it may not be this week, maybe next week, but Brian, Brian, they're dodging me. They don't want to talk to me, but I can promise you they want to buy. You know, well, if they wanted to buy, you've already followed up, you've already quoted them, you've already offered, you've already presented, you already tried to close. If they wanted to buy, they, they would have bought already or they at least wouldn't be dodging you, you know, so, yeah. 
three three things I want to uh, kind of kind of close with real quick. Three keys to overcoming the quote unquote initial resistance or the initial negativity that comes with the insurance business. We don't we don't technically agree that there is that, and the reasons why we don't agree that 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 stuff actually exists at all is because number one, we are be sold. We are sold that this is the best business in the world and that we are sold on what we offer, we believe in what we have to offer, and we don't, we don't believe there's any negative context at all to what we have to offer because we believe it solves a problem and that we sell the best products in the world and that we have the most important career in the world. Number two, be passionate about the business. If you are passionate, prospects feel passion. They will start to think of you as the guy that if they're going to buy, they've got, got to buy from him. Because he's sold, he believes, and he is passionate. Be passionate. Clients buy us, and they feel passion. The third key to overcoming these things, be confident. If you are confident, and you are making big claims, and you are letting people know that you are the man to talk to in this space, and that you are the best agent in the world, at least act like you are, they will start to buy into those things. Confidence shows People don't buy things from people that are not confident. So be sold, be passionate, and be confident about what you have to offer. Anything else you want to add before we end? Yeah, one last thing real quick is just that, again, I don't, I don't uh, agree with the, the uh, uh, theory that there's negativity. You know, the insurance business is, has a, a negative public perception. I, I don't agree with that theory. I meet with a lot of clients, and at the end of every client meeting, Almost every client is so appreciative of help me helping them develop a plan, so appreciative whether it's a Medicare supplement, helping them choose the right one or Medicare Advantage plan or life insurance or home health care, or it, it doesn't matter the product. Uh, they're so appreciative of me helping them uh, get the best plan uh, to, to fit their needs. And, uh, and people... People, they'll meet with the individuals they have confidence and trust in, mm-hmm. and they'll do business with people they have confidence and trust in. So, uh, Millions of people wouldn't be in this business if, if it was a negative business, or there wouldn't be that many millionaires if this was such a negative business, or there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be you know, half the planet or more owns insurance of some sort. They wouldn't own it if it was a negative business. You know? But this is a great career for uh, whether you're, you're a, a man or you're a woman, uh, it, this is a tremendous, tremendous career for, for the right individual. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable opportunity. It's, it's the only uh, opportunity that I'm aware of uh, that has residual incomes uh, to where, you know, you sell a policy and, you know, five, ten years down the line, you're still getting uh, renewal, renewal commissions off of that sale and to where each and every year you should make more money and you can build a really, really nice renewal block and to where uh, one day uh, you'll have a you'll be able to to uh, enjoy the fruits of that labor that you had previously done. Most industries, and I'll just use the real estate industry as a, as an example. It's a great industry, and people make a lot of money. But if you don't make a a home sale in May, you don't get paid in May. But in the insurance industry, you're getting paid in May for all your previous successes. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a it's a it's a great opportunity for the right individual. And uh, again, whether you're male or female. Uh, young or old, it can be a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. And Brian, he owns Secure Insurance Group. Here at Secure Insurance Group, we build happy, successful, six-figure insurance agents. That is what we do on a daily basis. We are here to help insurance agents, and that is exactly what we do. If you're out there, if you have questions, if if you want to call us, our office is 417-883-9300. Please pick up the phone and call us as soon as you hear this because I can promise you, you want to be a part of a successful, uh, happy insurance agency that's built a phenomenal culture that never gets beat on price, that offers the top commission. Call us today, Cody or Brian, either way. Again, this is the best career in the world. If you are sold, passionate, and confident about it, it is the best career in the world. Uh, thank you for, for, for uh, joining and helping me with this call very much. You're um, welcome. And, uh, again, this is Cody with Secure Agent Mentor and SecureAgentMentor.com. If you have any questions, please reach out. Have a phenomenal week. See 10 people. Ask 10 people to buy. And for every one person you want, have 10 people in your pipeline. Thank you very much for listening. Have a phenomenal week.